Jostens and the J Club have partnered for more than 25 years to recognize the most outstanding Division III college football player. Marcus is a national manager with Jostens and played college football for the Wisconsin Badgers. Welcome, Marcus. Good afternoon, Johnnies. It's good to be here. It's good to be here amongst brothers of the, of the football breed and just amongst a family. You know, uh, as they mentioned earlier, I got an opportunity to play football at Wisconsin. And when I first moved here back in 2000, they said, you know what, you've got to get up and watch a St. John's game. So that fall, I ended up going up and, and I watched the, uh, the Johnnies beat up on the Tommies. And I tell you what, it was an awesome experience. Uh, and I said, no matter what, I said, no matter what, I got to figure out a way to be a part of that. And so, you know, I kind of dug through my contacts and dug through my list. And, and what do you know? My very second job out of college, I got a chance to work for that man over there, Brian Pfeiffer. And so I just want to thank you for the opportunity, Brian. It's wonderful learning from you. So it's great to be here. It's great to be here. Um, I get the blessed opportunity to be the national manager of college championship for Jostens. And so as you may know, Jostens is a, is a company that's born right down the road, Noah Tana. And so what we do is we get an opportunity to help our customers celebrate moments that matter. And tonight it's an absolute honor to be here with you celebrating what could be the biggest moment to date for an extremely talented young man that we all have come to know and love over his time as a Johnny. But before we get into the details of the man of the hour, I'd like to take a moment and send a heartfelt thank you to the wonderful leadership and membership of the J Club, to Adam and to the different folks that have helped put this event together, thank you. To Coach Fashi and your, and your staff, thank you. To the entire St. John's community, we say thank you. For the last 25 years, we've grown a partnership that is second to none, not only in the, on the Division III level, but in all of collegiate athletics. In our manufacturing plant down in, down in Denton, Texas, we get the awesome privilege to produce over 700,000 rings a year. They're all handcrafted for teams and schools across the country. Most of these rings have similarities, either a shared vision or a shared team, or a shared brand. However, there is only one Gallardi Trophy winner per year. And tonight, this extremely talented signal caller gets to join three of his fellow Johnny buddies on the biggest stage in Division III football. You see, Jackson Erdman is what Dick Vitale calls a PT peer, a prime time player, baby. <laughs> 92 career passing touchdowns. Hopefully I get these right, Jackson. 92 career passing touchdowns. 6,599 passing yards and 699 attempts. Those are some big numbers. I could speak for days about your performance on the field, Jackson, but your commitment to service, helping others, and the other things besides football are all just as amazing. So on behalf of the entire Jackson's family, we couldn't be more happy than to present the 2018 Gallardi Trophy to the hometown kid. None other than Mr. Jackson Irvin. Thank you.
<laughs> thank you so much, everyone, for coming out. This is just a great event. I want to say thank you to Mr. Carpenter, Mr. Moore, to Adam, to Jocelyn, and Jay Club for putting on this event for presenting me with this honor. I'm truly humbled to receive this award. First, I want to just thank God for blessing me with the ability to play football, and furthermore, to, to play football at St. John's Grace University on Earth. I am beyond thankful. Uh, considering everything that's happened this year, I think it's pretty special that St. John's gets to bring home the Gallardi Trophy. And I say St. John's because this is a team event. Every, everything that's went into this, the, it's the coaches, the athletic staff, the players, it, it's just a team event. And speaking of team, there are, a couple, there are several members here today from the 28, 2018 team, and I'd like them all to stand, please. Guys, everything that happened this season, one of the most historic seasons ever at St. John's, all because of you guys and everyone else. Thank you so much for everything you've done. I love every single one of you, and thank you for being here. To my offensive linemen, Benjamin, Danny, Carl, Nick, Isaac, Josh, and Otto, thank you for always protecting me and having my blind side. It doesn't happen without the big boys up front. Everybody knows that, and I love you guys to death. To all my wide receivers, tight ends, running backs, thank you for everything and making my job as a quarterback easy. We seriously have the best skilled positions in the nation. And coaches know that, everybody knows that. It didn't look like that on paper, but because we're so deep, uh, we got to spread the ball out, and you know that, that's what made us so, so tough to stop. So I want to thank those guys for being so unselfish with the ball and for making my job easy. I want to thank the other QBs, especially Ben. Ben Albert, we, we talked so much, other coaches, any other team in the country, he, he'd be a starter. I want to thank him for pushing me to be the best I can be. And I want, I want to thank Chris Backus for always getting on me and not letting me slack off. I want to thank the defense for forcing me to get better each day at practice and for always letting us win in the two-minute drill. <laughs> I want to thank the scout team for giving it their all every single day at practice. They made us so much better, and half the time they're better than the team we, we played on Saturday. Specifically, I want to thank Jacob Lucas. Jacob Lucas is a four-year senior scout team player. Every single day he came to practice, led the scout team, he met with coaches, watched film to make sure they were in the right spots, being the best that they could be for, for us as an offense. And we wouldn't be up here, we wouldn't be here today, we wouldn't have had the season, and I wouldn't be up here if it wasn't for Jay Louie in the defense. So thank you so much. Thank you to all my teammates who made this season so special. This was the greatest sports team I've ever been on. And I'm so, so thankful. I love every single one of you guys. And, you know, just thank you for being my family. Thank you to the entire coaching staff at St. John's. We have the best coaching staff in Division Three, and it really, really showed this year. Coach Foshing, thank you for giving me the opportunity to play at St. John's and for always having my back. Cole and Josh, thank you for doing an unbelievable job with the game plans this year and for always believing in me. Coach Orts, thank you for helping me do the little things right on a daily basis and for always being real with me. I appreciate that so much. Megs and Mater, thank you for working, for, for, our, for working with the big boys up front to protect me. Novak and Dumo, thank you for recruiting me to St. John's. I honestly don't think I would have been a second chance if it wasn't for both of you guys. To Justin, thank you for encouraging me to drink the Kool-Aid and be the best that I can be. <laughs> Jim and Shields, thank you for keeping the train room in line and always being there in case I need anything. Scott and Holly, thank you for keeping me healthy. Uh, that's a heavy burden and tough to do, so I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for everyone on the staff for playing a role and helping us be successful. We wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for a coaching staff, our training staff, and athletic staff. Thank you to my high school coaches in attendance. Coach Swanson, thank you for helping me with the fundamentals, how to throw the football, and for those 40-yard dropbacks I hated doing. <laughs> thank you to Coach Joe for helping me believe in myself, and thank you to my dad for instilling me the love and respect for the game of football. To my family, it's been a long journey with many ups and downs, but you've always had, had my back and been there besides me. Thank you for your unconditional support. Mom, Dad, Kendi, Lara, love you guys, and thanks for all you have on my back. Jana, Jeff, Julie, and John, Julie, love you guys, and thank you so much. Johnny Nation, I love you so much. Thank you for your support. I'm truly honored to receive this award, and I am beyond blessed to be a Johnny. Thank you, and go Johnnies, baby. <laughs> Well, congratulations. Uh, great joy to watch you this year. Uh, the high
highlights. Uh, the, you let St. John's do an amazing season. And the broadcast broadcast crew extends our congratulations to you too. Uh, you're fun to watch, and you put on a great show. Talk to me a little bit about uh, what you look back on and remember the most, and was your favorite highlight of the year? Was it the St. Thomas game, the playoff run? Tell us about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Tom Johnny this year, or excuse me, Johnny Tommy this year, was. <laughs> I don't feel bad, I do that too. Go ahead. You know, that, that stuff would be just everything about that week. You know, so so much emotion into that game and just that week. It was very, very special. And, um, you know, com coming out, uh, we were, we, the coaches put together a great game plan and we were able to execute it uh, decently well, I think. And then, uh, you know, they just put a stomp on St. Thomas, put them in their place. Um, and, you, know, you know, it felt really good. So that's definitely a highlight. Uh, you know, it was just a crazy, crazy special season. There's so many highlights. Uh, playing Thomas Moore in the snow. That, that was pretty special. Bethel, um, first pass from Will. Will take it to the house, making all those guys miss, carving them up. Um, and then, you know, uh, Westby's pick six. That was just unreal. So a lot, a lot of special moments from the season. You know, you didn't play for John Gillardi, obviously, but you've been around the Johnny program. You know he is basically St. John's football. And as I like to say on radio, you can't say St. John's without thinking about John Gillardi. Uh, talk to us about you know receiving this award. It's named for him and all that goes into it. What does what does that mean to you? It's it's so special. I didn't have the opportunity to meet John, but you know he put D three football on the map at St. John's, and it, it's just so special that I have the opportunity to one go to St. John's and two play football at at you know his university. Is I'm very very thankful for that. And uh, you know, you just see that every day in the coaches and the players and the alum. Um, th this is all John. This is what he did. This is what he stood for. Uh, and then just the alum, the relationship. Tom Winneman, I'm sure you all know he he's had a huge impact on me. Um, and then the weekend. You over cussing, don't we? Thank you. Thank you. Um, but ju just a little bit about Tom. That, that week when John passed, he came up to the John and Tommy game, and he was at practice before, and then he went out to dinner with a couple of us at Gretzky, and he's talking, to him, and he told he told us, he's like, hey, tomorrow at some point, the, the game's not going to go well at one point, and just woke up and like, John, help us out a little bit. Um, so then, sure enough, I think the score is like, actually, I don't know the score. But anyway, they're driving. It was 28 to 20. 28 to 20. Okay. Where the fumble happened? Yep, exactly. Yeah, when John poked the ball out of Parker's yes, arm. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's what happened. I was a little nervous because, uh, you know, we were scoring stuff, but they're driving in, so it would have been even closer. And I look up, I'm like, John, help us out a little bit here. Sure enough, next play, pokes the ball out, and actually turns into the house. So they're just really, really special. So I'm very, very honored to be here at St. John's. Uh, obviously, doing work in the community is big for you. It was tough to get you on football weekly. You were so busy uh, helping out in the community. Uh, where does that come from, your, your want to give back the way you have? Well, um, you know, it's instilled me since I was young. Uh, my family would always help out to feed my seven children locally, or else the when I was in my high school football program. Uh, we'd go volunteer and stuff. And then, once again, at St. John's, you know, I remember meeting with Coach Bosch, and he said, at St. John's, we strive to be the best uh, athletically, academically, and helping out community service. So, you know, the, 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 that's just fostered all through this. And St. John's and St. Ben's prevents a lot of opportunities where we can help out and give back. So I'm very fortunate to be able to do that. Well, I think you've taken it kind of to the next level because not only have you, you know, fought uh, child sex trafficking, but you've also helped uh, refugees and, and immigrants to learn English. And I think you helped out at Anna Marie's, the Battered Women's Shelter as well. You know, a little bit of Anna Marie's. I went to Thailand. I had that going to go to Thailand uh, with the service trip. So I wasn't physically fighting sex trafficking, but I was working with organizations <laughs> that helped fight sex trafficking. So not, not as good as it sounds, but. Um, <laughs> um, and then, I, <laughs> and then I, I helped out teach an English as second language class locally um, because I could see myself doing that in the future for a bit. So yeah, there's just a lot, again, a lot of opportunities presented to the school that I've been able to take advantage of. What are you studying in St. John's and where are you helping? I mean, you got a year, a year left. Or a semester. Yo, yo, what, yo. What you, what, what's your plan? That's a great question. Great question. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm majoring in global business leadership, and then I also minor in theology, so kind of an interesting uh, combo there. Uh, but I, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do. It's okay. You've got plenty of time. And this is a great network. 
there are some, yeah, see, there are some people who would really like to have somebody like you, you know, who's a leader and uh, definitely uh, shown his stuff on the field help their company and organization, like the Packers, right. Okay, well, okay, we're all lucky you went to Penn State and not Wisconsin. You wouldn't be here tonight if you was at Wisconsin. You'd be there. Uh, you're better than most of You tell them, right? Oh, well, uh, yeah, no, I do. Uh, <laughs> You got uh, one year of eligibility left. I know you're still you're still in college, though, right? Uh, it's a it's, it's, a, it's a weird schedule. I'm up there on weekends. Okay, I know. I've seen you at the basketball game. I know. Yeah. You had a good time up there at the basketball game. Yeah, they keep winning, so uh, yeah. we'll, we'll be there. They keep coming, then. Yeah. That's what, yeah, I don't know. Um, so, what are you doing now in the off season? What do you what have you planned to, to you know, obviously continue the success St. John's has had? Because it all starts with you guys working out and with Justin Ross and the seven on seven and, and doing those things in the off season that paves the way to a great season. Oh yeah, uh, Coach Ross has been doing a great job preparing us. Uh, he always says you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. So we, we as players, we got to focus. You know, go to the early morning running sessions, seven on sevens, lifting. He does a phenomenal job. Um, so just hitting all of those. I'm currently not at St. John's during the week. My uncle runs an engineering company in Bloomington, which I'm very, very thankful for the work and opportunity to work there. Um, and then I'm also, I, I get to go up and throw with the guys in the dome and stuff. So it's kind of busy, but you know, all, all these guys are working hard and everything. So you want to be there with them when you can. Exactly, exactly. Trying to whip the young guys into shape a little bit. <laughs> Uh, let's take a look at your picture up here. I noticed something. You've got that, that big, the armband. Uh, what is that all about? And, and, and take people through, you know, I know, not, don't give up too many secrets of the St. John's football program, but talk about, I'm sure people are interested in that band you're wearing and what's on it. Yeah, so there were a lot, a lot of play calls. I like to think of them as more like guidelines, so I always follow them. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of plays, and then, you know, they'll signal them in. Um, it, it's scripted, so, like, first couple plays and everything. Uh, not too many typos, usually. <laughs> right, Josh? <laughs> um, but, yeah, I know you. They, 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 do, they do a great job Hold on. scripting and everything. Marilyn Coltis, why don't you have her type in there? She'd probably do a better job, right? <laughs> no, it's awesome. They had a color, color coordinate and everything. Very visually appealing, so I appreciate that. <laughs> So we noticed, and Brian Backus has pointed this out, Terry, when we have a successful play, when St. John's successful, you want to get everybody in the line and you want to make that next play call. And you Obviously, you're thinking ahead, and if this play works, you, are you thinking that far ahead to the next play after you run one, or where does it all come to? Uh, well, in the moment, I'm not like, I'm not thinking, okay, this is going to be the next play always. I kind of have it scripted in my mind, which plays I like, depending on the weekend game plan. And then if we do get a first down or stuff and they give me the okay to go, then I'll call that next play. Usually it's a pass. <laughs> yeah, yes, of course. <laughs> Wait, you look over and say, can I go? Or sometimes, just, sometimes. Really? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes they'll give me the hand or I'll be like, can we keep going? Yeah, they'll just give me the finger. Who? Who gives you the hand? Uh, Josh is usually on the sideline. Oh, it's um, not Gary so, going. No, no, I don't look to get you. Take back. Run the, the ball. Run it. Run the ball. So yeah, don't look, avoid Gary at all costs. Um, but yeah, no, dude, we, well, it's fun going. It's fast. So. Usually, I save this for like your senior time on football weekly, which we do Thursdays. Uh, but if there's one thing about the Johnny football program you could change, if you had the power, if you were the head coach for a day. What would you what would you change? I'll throw a little bit of baby blue in the uniforms. Are they me again? Little baby blue, Johnny Blue. I don't know. We get a show of hands of how the alumni would feel about that. Just one game, just one game. I am surprised. I am surprised that one only. Because usually the alumni are like, no, it's red. It's red and white. And that's the way it is. I understand why blue uniforms this year. Yeah. So, have you seen them? Yeah. There's. We'll just say there's a little bit of surprise. So that's all I'll say. <laughs> so. Just kidding, just kidding. Okay. Uh, you know, obviously everybody knows you came from Penn State. You know, tried to walk on there, and now we're thankfully you're here at St. John's. For those people who are kind of like, oh, how different is it? How different is it from that level now being here at St. John's and the things you go through on a daily basis, where probably you're more of a true student athlete. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Penn State, that was a business I've ever been, you know, waking up at 6 a.m., going to lifts, classes, practice, 
said it all, I'll get back to my room around 10.30. Uh, and it, it was very, very busy. Um, and just going from the school size, you know, Penn State, like 50,000 coming here, uh, not, not nearly that big. Um, and then just like uh, Penn State, you know, that, that was a lot of whistles and like different practice structures, so that was a lot different. You know, as far as guys go, uh, when we always talk, St. John's is a bunch, it's a D3 school, but it's a bunch of guys who, it's a lot of D3 football players that shouldn't play D3, you know, so it, 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 it's so much fun. What's the atmosphere? That's what, oh, in the, the community, gotcha. I would think, well, no, I'm just saying that that's what attracted you to St. John's probably when you reopened your recruiting and looked to transfer, am I wrong? Oh yeah, oh, no, totally right. Um, I, I knew the special place, my dad was always trying to get me to go to the Tommy Johnny game, and I never did. Um, and then he made me, he actually made me look at St. John's, which I'm very, very fortunate for, and then Coach Novak and Dumo, I was like, who are these goofballs? You know, they kept bringing me back and everything. Just fell in love with the place. Fell in love with the place and everything. So, uh, and then, um... They can make you do that. Yeah, 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 exactly. They, they, have, they do, they're great at their jobs, and they kept bringing me back. So and, the first Tommy Johnny game, you saw you were playing. Actually, when I was thinking about transferring, I went to the playoff game at St. Thomas, and then that was the first one. Okay. Um, that uh, I, I experienced. Uh, it didn't go as well as. No, it didn't. Let's let's move on. Uh, <laughs> that was not a fun day, unfortunately. Anybody else have a question they want to pose to Jackson before we put the wraps on this? Silence. Okay. A oh okay. oh yeah. By the way, the number two is a very special number at St. John's. Have you been told that? I, yeah. I'm aware. <laughs> yeah. Did you were you three at one point in time? I was, yeah. Okay. The re go, go ahead, please. Super hard question. Uh, when did you cut your hair? <laughs> Do you really have to cut your hair? Yeah, no. I want to repeat the question. <laughs> uh, they want to know when he's going to cut his hair. I, I was strongly influenced by the coaching staff and my father to cut my hair at the end of the season, so I gave it a little trim, but I don't think I would be cutting anytime soon. <laughs> You here. Yeah, right. That's right. That's right. Hey, what was it like being on the field at the Sugar Bowl? And you were part of the All-State Good Works team and, and going through that. I wish they had introduced more of you guys uh, than they did at halftime, but that had to be kind of a thrill. Yeah, I, uh, it was a crazy big stadium, very, very loud, down on the side of the when we were there for a bit, waiting to go out. Um, and then they actually had us run out to the middle of the field, like almost sprint, because they were on a time crunch, so I was just hoping, like, I can't strip out here. So, no, that's all I was thinking at the time. But when I got out there, then I uh, looked at the wrong camera, too, so kind of screwed that up. But uh, it was a very, very cool experience, nonetheless. Good thing you were still in shape, though, from the season. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. I guess that uh, will wrap it up, unless you have a question. I do not have a question. Thank you very much, you guys. This was a great... <laughs>